So uh, I'm really happy today to have Madeline D'Souza. And full disclosure, Maddie's my daughter. And uh, I really am happy to have a chance to interview her and have her tell us a little bit about how she persevered and succeeded through university. So thanks, thanks for joining us, Maddie. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So uh, let me where did you go to high school and what department did you actually apply to? So I went to high school in Elmira at Elmira District Secondary School or EDSS. Um, and I actually applied for civil engineering. After the first year of civil engineering, uh, I decided to switch because the course in civil engineering I ended up liking the most was actually computational methods. And so we learned a lot of the basics of, of coding. We learned a lot of uh, problem solving. Um, I also didn't love mechanics, um, which was a lot of, of civil engineering, which I luckily discovered in, in my first year. And so I decided to make the switch over to, to ECE and, and apply. And fortunately, I got in. So when you made the switch, it was a bit of a transition from uh, civil over to computer. Uh, what happened that first year when you switched over? So I ended up probably getting or I ended up getting uh, about a high 70 average in, in civil engineering and I switched over and I um, was very, very close to actually having to repeat my first term in ECE. Uh, it was a huge challenge for me, really, really big learning curve. And so, uh, yeah, so I, I really struggled that first year of, of ECE for sure. Did, uh, but you didn't give up. And I noticed uh, that every year, every term, you got a little bit better, a little bit better. Um, how did you do that? Like what, what, uh, what gave you that kind of a, that growth mindset to keep persevering and keep overcoming rather than giving up? I, uh, I heard once from, from, uh, uh, my, my own father, you, uh, that, uh, to just keep trying your hardest, that was probably the best piece of advice I was given is to just try your hardest and have your goal not to achieve 100% or 90%, just have your goal be to improve a little bit every single term. And so that was really my goal. My goal was not to uh, be top of the class or to uh, you know, beat my friends. My goal was really to beat myself, be my previous self and learn a little bit more about myself every single term. Excellent. Um, now, I think you also managed to keep a little bit of balance too as well. Um, you didn't panic. You didn't go into full study mode. You still took time out. Tell me about how you got a little bit of balance and, and, and helped, especially with your mental health. So I believe every single term I enrolled in intramural sports. I absolutely love sports. I enrolled in both hockey and soccer um, and the variations of those, so futsal, ball hockey, and so on. And for me, that was uh, that actually helped me to really study harder, taking those breaks throughout the day, um, even going, uh, going for walks and things like that allowed me to really clear my head. And that's just something that I learned. That's one of the things I, I had been able to learn over the years that not cramming, not studying super last minute was actually, it was more beneficial for me to go out and take a small break and come back and study rather than cramming, cramming, cramming. So for me, it was more valuable for me to um, more valuable for me to go and, and play sports or go and take a walk than it was to say work on a one percent assignment for four hours straight. Um, and so, yeah, so just learning that priority and, and being patient with myself was a, was a big thing as well. That's that's great advice. Um, so when you finished. Uh, you can brag a little bit about yourself, but what was your average in 4B when you finished your last term? I believe my average was a little bit above a 91. Okay. Um, and I actually, uh, only when I got my degree did I find out that I actually graduated with distinction. So that was really nice to know that every single term I was able to bring my average up just enough in order to actually graduate with distinction. So now, in your first few terms, you probably struggled a little bit getting co-op jobs, and a lot of students despair. They go, oh, I'll never get a co-op job. Uh, but uh, tell me, like, I know you did struggle a little bit in your first years, but 
at what point did this, the things kind of the tide switch and you start getting more offers? So I would say my, my first co-op job was the most difficult one to get. I don't think I got it until the very last round um, of continuous, pretty sure it was maybe three weeks before, um, you know, you had to find a job. It was really, really tough. It was actually a short co-op as well. Um, it was pre-approved to be something like 10 weeks. So it was quite short. Um, and in that job, I basically used GoDaddy and did some very small website design and very um, basic uh, website maintenance. And I really took it upon myself in that job to pick up new skills and to, um, you know, learn things like HTML and even just basic web design. And so I ended up uh, being able to use that in my next, in my next job as well. And even to say things like, you know, this was what my job had asked me for. And this is what I took upon myself and went above and beyond to teach myself. Um, and so, yeah, so I found that really helped me in my, in my next job. And after getting one or two jobs, um, it was quite easy to, to get, uh, to get jobs after that. And, and even during the pandemic, uh, I heard that you, you managed to get a job without really applying. Uh, how much do you attribute that to the co-op experience and all the experience that you've gotten? Oh, I definitely, you know, attribute it to past experience. I think after you get your first or second job, uh, it's, it becomes much, much easier to actually get a job. I also think it was um, very attributed to the fact that I applied to jobs that I really had passion for. The, the advantage of having co-ops under your belt and having completed them is that you don't apply to quite as many jobs after your first one or two co-ops um, because you end up finding you get a lot of interviews, you get a lot of interest in you, and so you can be a lot more picky in terms of the jobs you actually apply and you can start finding jobs that you actually enjoy working for. Um, also, another thing is uh, returning to previous companies is another thing that um, is very, very beneficial. And so that, uh, yeah, if you find a job that you like, you know, that's a, that's a huge benefit of it. Yeah. And, and now moving forward, I don't think anyone ever looks at your 1A marks, do they? <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody ever looks at my 1A marks. And, uh, and I actually returned to a previous employer. So they didn't even look at my fourth year marks. But that just goes to show uh, how valuable the co-op is. I didn't, um, I didn't even have to interview for a full-time job after I graduated. I uh, reached out to a previous employer that I really liked and I had a very, um, very good working relationship with. And he said, yeah, um, he actually... Uh, told me that they're creating a position because they wanted to hire me. Uh, and so they ended up making a position for me in order to, in order to hire. In That's order awesome. To That's awesome. So a lot of first years being the first year academic advisor, they come to me, they're really frustrated. What if you could go back and tell your first year self or your friends who are struggling, what would you, what would you tell them? Uh, when they're really hitting that dark sweat place where they just want to give it all up? Uh, I would say, remember that this is not, this is not the end all and be all. Uh, school is actually not your life as hard as that is to believe when your exam is first thing tomorrow morning and you, uh, you know, you're, you're super underprepared. Um, that school is not your life and failure is okay. If you fail a course, you fail a term, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter in the end. Uh, I was very fortunate not to have, fortunately not to have failed a term or course, but let me tell you, I was so close so many times. I was, you know, one or two exam questions, one or two multiple choice questions from having to repeat a course. And so uh, there's no shame in, in failing. There's no shame in having to repeat something or even having uh, or even to, to changing, right, to, to switching out and choosing a different program. Um, absolutely no shame in that. But to just keep working hard and keep improving yourself, that would be that would be the number one, the number one thing. Super. Well, thanks so much. And I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to your, your dear old dad. So take <laughs> Thank care. you so much for having me. <laughs> awesome. Take care. Thank you.